In this video, I'm looking at long wave infrared, otherwise known as thermal infrared. Following along the spectrum from my last video about near or short wave infrared, in the electromagnetic spectrum, there is a nice window in which air is transparent, through which we can see thermal infrared using the appropriate detectors. Here is one such detector, a non-contact thermometer. This device can read temperatures at a distance. There is a label for the temperature range, and the other side shows the spot size that detects at various distances. Otherwise, there's no brand on this thing. The device can see the temperature of whatever it is pointed at, because everything in the universe emits electromagnetic radiation. And long wave infrared reveals the temperatures that we live in. I have here a zinc selenide carbon dioxide laser cutting lens. This is one of very few materials that can focus long wave infrared. Some others are zinc sulfide, germanium, and table salt, but not glass. I'm going to use this lens to focus some thermal radiation. I have here an iPhone case. It's made of a material that changes color from brown to green, or this other one, orange, when warmed up above 33 degrees Celsius. I'm putting the lens between the iPhone case and the soldering iron turned on to about 400 degrees Celsius. After several seconds, we can see an image of the soldering iron appear on the iPhone case. The lens is focusing heat onto the case, making a crude heat camera. Taking this principle further, I have some thermochromatic LCD film here with a color transition temperature of about 25 to 28 degrees Celsius. I've made another crude thermal camera, this time in a more portable style. This LCD film seems to produce a faster but somewhat blurrier image compared to the iPhone case. This may be because the film conducts heat, spreading the image out as it forms. Here is an image of the sun. Using the same detector part from a non-contact thermometer, I have made a mini version of a thermal detector. The field of view is about 45 degrees, and the output is an LED that glows red when the field of view is warmer than ambient, and blue when cooler than ambient. It's a very simple circuit that reads the sensor temperature via I2C and uses that to color the LED. In my personal quest for miniaturization, I made an even smaller micro version, which uses a Bluetooth chip as the microcontroller. If we were to think of this sensor as a single pixel and made an array of them, we could construct a thermal image of a scene. Devices that do this are called thermal cameras. I have here an inexpensive thermal camera from Seek. This plugs into an Android phone and shows the world in thermal temperature as color variation. This can be very useful for many things, such as checking insulation in your house, or with the zinc selenide lens in this case, seeing electronics close up for detecting components that are faulty while they're in use. Not content with just having a thermal camera, I took the idea further by combining it with this laser image projector. The advantage of using a laser to draw an image is that no focus is needed, and this can even project sharp images onto irregular surfaces. I made the device handheld so I could carry it around and look at the world. This could be the world's first portable thermal imaging laser projection system. What this does is it uses the seek to see in the thermal infrared and then project the image back onto the scene, overlaying the heat as color onto the object showing their relative temperatures. Out on the street we can see the temperature difference between the footpath and the grass. It takes a second or two to catch up. This drain pipe across the footpath was really quite interesting to see with a thermal overlay on it. I also looked at some cars to see the heat differences on their surfaces. The cars here are all white, which reveals a big flaw with this device. Not only is it only visible at night, but it's very hard to see on dark surfaces, such as dark cars. 
I also had some fun with water, including ice and hot water, and mixing different temperatures of water together and seeing the flow of pattern. That's it for now. I'll leave this video to finish with various thermal overlays.